Hi, this is Josh Payne from Quantopian, and today I wanted to review with you the data available to you in the Quantopian store and ways to access that data using Blaze, a key library that we've used to uh, make that data available to you uh, in Quantopian. So we're going to start here today just in the storefront just to review the basics uh, navigating the store. You can access it via the navigation item uh, when you're logged in the store. And you can see that we've got institutional quality feeds here um, available to you for use on Quantopian. Uh, we've got 20 plus feeds from three separate vendors here today. It's October 2015. So at that point in time, at launch, we've got lots of feeds here. And we've got more in the pipeline that we're adding uh, every day and working to add every day. You can scroll through, check out which feeds you might be interested in, and dig in. Let's. Let's look at one. In this case, let's look at Estimize, a vendor that provides crowdsourced earnings estimates data. Now you notice that the price is there. It's $10 a month. The store runs on a subscription fee. But for every data vendor and every data set that we provide here in Quantopian, we provide a free sample. So in this case, Estimize's data dates back to October 2010, and we provide uh, we provide access via a free sample of data all the way up to one year ago from today. So on a, on a moving basis, a uh, trailing one-year window, uh, you don't have access to October 7th, 2014 through uh, 2015. But uh, from the beginning of Estimized data set out to one year from today, you, you can access the data through their free sample. If you'd like access to the more recent data and the daily updates that come in from Estimize, well, then you need to subscribe at the $10 a month subscription fee. Going through the rest of the details here, we give some key metrics uh, we outline here just to give you a little bit of an idea of what's available in the data set. That's not all the data that's available. Uh, you can go, and if you're curious to learn more about the data, you can go click uh, this example notebook. Uh, the example notebook will take you to a Quantopian research notebook that shows all the fields and all of, uh, all of the data in action in a sort of simple, simple, basic way. So if we hop over here, we can see that we've got uh, Estimize. It gives it a little review on Blaze, which I'll give verbally in the, in the next portion. Um, and then it shows all the different, all the data and gives you a sort of a rundown on all the fields that are available. Uh, so you can get sort of detailed documentation if you go off and click on that example notebook. We also provide here in the basic page some simple, uh, simple instructions as to how to access the data when running the, the data through the store. Uh, if you'd like to access that free sample that I, that I discussed, you, uh, you'll use the following import, and then a revisions free uh, object will be available to you in, in research. If you have purchased access and want the full data set, well, then you'll have a slightly different import statement. You'll get rid of that underscore free, and away you go. So with that in mind, let's go on over to our research notebook that I've written up here. And we can walk through accessing the data and how to use Blaze. So like I said, um, I'm coming in as a user with access, with, with, as a normal user with uh, typical access. And if I execute this cell, uh, if you're not familiar with research, you execute a cell by um, one ways by hitting shift return. And so if I execute that cell, you notice that I haven't been requesting the free version or the free sample of the data. I'm asking for the paid version, and I got an error. And so the error is telling me, hey, I don't have access, oops, I don't have access to the data set that I was requesting. If I want to go, if I want to go purchase access, I can go use, I can go to that URL uh, to purchase access. Uh, I should have should have noted over here, little buy button. You can go and uh, purchase the data there. Uh, but if you want to just play around with the data, examine the data, try it before you buy it, um, you can access uh, the, those four years of, of free data, four, days in, four years and growing, uh, just by appending underscore free. So there, I didn't get the error this time. And now if I, if I hit revisions free, I'll get a quick sort of, quick sort of head of the, the set. What I do want to sort of demonstrate is there's type ahead, um, typical conveniences that you'd expect uh, in, 
in IPython or in general in the product. So if I execute the cell, I'm going to get the first 10 rows of the object that came back. And here it's a great way to sort of look at the data, get a feel for what's, what columns are there, what the data actually looks like, not just sort of the descriptions, but what the data actually looks like. And this is all with that free, free sample. And we can see all the different sample, all the different columns that come along in this sample and the full data set. A couple of concepts that I do want to highlight as we're, as we're looking through. Um, there are two key date columns that you'll see in all of these data sets. The as of date that you see over here and the timestamp. Uh, so the timestamp represents the date, uh, the date time actually, upon which uh, this data entered the Quantopian system. Uh, so when that data was in reality available for use uh, in the system. In the case of data that we're accessing and acquiring on an ongoing basis, that simply means the date the date time upon which we inserted the data into our database, into our, into our storage capability. For data that we uploaded previously in bulk, say we uploaded historical data in bulk uh, prior to the launch of the store or prior to the launch of a particular data set, that historical batch load, uh, this timestamp represents our estimation or our modeling of when that data would be available to, to you. So it's a, an approximation for that historic data. This is the case with all all historic data sets that we've got inside Quantopium, inside the store and otherwise. The, that other date, the as of date, represents the time period or the time frame to which this data applies. So in oftentimes this timestamp and the as of date will be very similar, but for something where it's maybe a quarterly filing, it will it, this as of date would be say the the date uh, sort of the end of quarter for which the, the data applies. So the end of first quarter would be you know March March 31st, or the end of second quarter would be June 30th. So the as of date is the date to which the data applies. Uh, the timestamp is the date upon which the data was available to you and, and your use inside Quantopium. Last key column that I want to show here inside uh, this, this object, uh, this Blaze object, is the SID. One of the things that we're doing here for every data set is mapping the, each row of data to the proper security, a security ID in the case of uh, Quantopium. So we map the ticker to the security ID so that you don't have to go through this. So all this data is ready to go and ready to be mapped towards SIDs inside, inside our systems. If you're familiar with Quantopium, you know that uh, all pricing data, all market data, all fundamental data is associated to a SID. Likewise, we're doing that same mapping for you here so that you don't have to worry about it in, in Quantopium and with this, with this data from the Quantopian store. You see we've got just uh, 10 rows here. Um, and in this case, um, you know, that data was pretty wide. And here, now I'm going to start to get into some of, uh, some of the description of how you use Blaze. In some ways, it's very similar to Pandas for folks who are uh, uh, familiar with it, but there are um, lots of differences. And let me take a step back and say, you know, the reason why we're using Blaze here is Blaze acts as our interface to uh, large data sets. It's a library for accessing and handling large data sets. Uh, in the case of some of these data sets in the Quantopian store, uh, they're very large. There are millions of rows, and what we want to do in the theme throughout this uh, demonstration will be that we want you to access the data with Blaze, push a lot of the computational burden to the Blaze library since that happens client side, and then narrow your data set down so that you can uh, use data once you once you bring data back over into the into the notebooks and and convert it over to say a pandas data frame. That data frame will be smaller, more manageable. You'll narrow the data with Blaze, manipulate it, and then really sort of do your analysis with pandas once that data is in a smaller smaller state. So one way to make the data smaller is to just you know pick the columns that you're interested in. And here I've created a list of uh, strings of the column column names that I'm interested in. I'm going to call it narrow revisions. And again, I run it and I can see sort of the narrower, narrower set of data that I'm interested in. Um, and we can see that this, this type is, is, a, is a Blaze expression. 
it's not it's not a pandas data frame that you know it might look like it, but it's still a, a pan a blaze a blaze expression. Now I was talking about how how large the data is. Even this you know even all these columns, um, this free data set is still over eight hundred thousand rows uh, long. Um, you're seeing uh, you see that you know we might not want to bring all of that data in, uh, and so I might want to filter that data down. So I can use Blaze to further filter that data down and, and sort it. So in this case, um, I can create a I can create a, a, a filter um, in this in this row in this uh, input cell input cell. Um, in this case, I'm going to take sort of this narrower revisions data you know expression, filter it down on SID. In this case, 24, our sort of classic canonical example of uh, filtering something down on Apple. And then I'm also going to say I just want uh, earnings per share uh, estimates. I don't want revenue estimates. Estimize in this case is giving us uh, two different kinds of estimates or multiple kinds of estimates for every every SID. Uh, folks on, on Estimize are estimating EPS. They're estim estimating revenue. I'm only interested in earnings per share, so let's just take that Let's take that, and then in turn, uh, I should uh, sort that data uh, once I have it, um, because it's sort of non-deterministic in what order the data is coming back. I'll sort it based on the as of date, based on the the time period to which uh, it applies. So let's sh let's run that, and now I can I can sort of display it here. I um, mean, you can see that delay. The the actual server-side execution happened happened when I was requesting the actual display of the data. And you see here I'm getting the first 10 rows, narrow data set. It's just, it's just for Apple now. It's just for this earnings per share. And if I take account, rather than having 800,000 rows now, I've just got uh, a shade under 4,000 rows of data. Now that I've got it in a more manageable, small Small set of data that I'm interested in. In this case, um, I can I can convert it to a data frame, a pandas data frame, where you'll have greater uh, greater ability to run the kind of computations you'll likely want to do with data in research. We provide for you in to to do so a sort of companion library called Odo. Um, so here I import Odo. I also import pandas because I want to convert. Uh, this this expression, the Apple revisions uh, data over to a data frame. So I import Odo, I import pandas, and I run I run this Odo function. And now when I now when I sort of push out that Apple Apple data frame in my input cell, I'm getting uh, you'll see uh, data frames happy to give you much more data in 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 research. You're getting uh, something like 60 rows out. Um, same data now converted to a data frame. So if I run type, I see that now this is this apple this apple underscore df is a, is a is a pandas data frame. Along with Blaze comes a lot of great uh, sort of sort of sort of sort of features uh, sort of helper functions to um, further manipulate the data. It isn't just about uh, filtering it. Um, so there are ways to. Uh, two of my favorite features here that come along with Blaze are this by function and uh, joining. So joining, uh, I'll, I'll just first, that's shown in a lot of the other examples in those example notebooks, so I won't show it here. Uh, the great thing that we can do by, with Blaze is join two data sets. Um, since we've done all this mapping by SID, we can do what is uh, de facto a, a database join uh, in Blaze by uh, sort of mapping things together based on SID and joins so two data, data sets that have come from two totally different data vendors. So I might take a data set from Eventvestor, I might take a data set from Estimize, since they've both been mapped with as of dates and, and the SID, more importantly, we can join those together and create uh, unique data sets that are joined that, that reflect the data from two different vendors um, easily, quickly here in a couple lines of code in Quantopium. What I'll show here is actually doing a, a, a group by um, or grouped reductions. So uh, in this case, I'll take a new data set. I'll take one from a CERN, which is a sentiment, uh, new sentiment data. In the case of a CERN, 
Uh, let's go. Let's go look at the data. We'll we'll sort it by as of date. We'll see that we have uh, for each day we've got an entry for each uh, each ticker and uh, the article sentiments that were published on that day and the SID, of course, timestamp as of date again present in all of these data sets. In this case, what I want to do is say, I'm not interested in the news sentiment on a company by company basis. I want to know the overall sentiment for the entire market or all the, all the tickers that a CERN was covering in on that particular day. And I'll check that out on a day by day, day by day basis. So Blaze provides uh, this buy, this buy function um, for doing group reductions. You can split the data up, uh, apply, uh, up, apply sort of the apply the the operation and then combine the data back up together. It's sort of a, a map reduce in a way. So I say I want the average daily sentiment. I'm going to you know import Blaze as BZ. I I want the average sentiment. So I'll ask I'll, I'll I'll go get the buy function here. I'll tell on what on what metric in that data set I want to group by. In this case, I want to use the as of date uh, the date the date to which the, the, the data applies, um, the sentiment in this case applies. And then I'll say I want to, uh, I want to sort of average up the article sentiment for all, all articles or all companies on that particular date. In this case, I'm equally weighting um, each company's articles, but this is um, sort of an example, an example to, to, to help you understand. And then lastly, I'll, I'll make sure that I sort it uh, by the as of date. So if I run that, um, again, I get the first 10 rows, and then if I count up, I'll see that I've got, you know, rather than uh, sentiment for uh, 770 uh, days over the course of for thousands of companies with many, many thousands of rows, I think, uh, you know, trust me, this data has over a million rows. Now I've reduced it down to 773 rows. Uh, I will again now that I've got the data in a smaller, more manageable, more manageable uh, size. I'll convert it over to a data frame with Odo again and sort it. Make sure that I've got it sorted. Uh, and now that it's in a data frame, I can use some of the charting libraries, uh, Matplotlib, or you know if you want to use Seaborn um, to actually visualize this data. You know, Blaze isn't going to provide you any visualization, but you can use Odo, convert it over, and then uh, visualize uh, your pandas, your pandas data frames or series uh, using Matplotlib, and that's what I'll do here. And here you've got a pretty noisy chart, um, but it shows the average news sentiment from a CERN uh, over the full time frame of their uh, of of their data set that they're providing, their free data set that they're providing here for us. Uh, so from uh, 2012 all the way up to 2014. So again, lots lots more to cover with Blaze. You can definitely dig in. There's documentation here here at the end. Um, if you're very familiar with Pandas or if you're very familiar with SQL, there are a couple of really useful pages there that help you to translate um, from from those libraries or from SQL or from Pandas over, over to Blaze. Um, I definitely found that uh, useful as someone who is uh, pretty familiar with SQL and, and reasonably familiar with Pandas. Uh, those two were, uh, those two pages were exceedingly helpful, but full documentation of all the API calls there. Hope you've enjoyed this little uh, review uh, and this introduction rather. Uh, my name again is Josh Payne. Always happy for feedback questions, so feel free to uh, reach out and let us know uh, if you've got confusion questions or uh, data sets that you're interested in using in the Quantopian store. We're always looking for more. So this is Josh signing off. Thanks so much.